I kind of always had a bit of a fighter's mentality. I had a bit of, I suppose, desperation in me deep down. I had a lot of hunger, I had a lot of mongrel, and I think that that's what carried me through when I first started. I just, I had nothing else. Like, this is all I've ever had, um, whether it be life dramas, money, um, issues in personal relationships or life or whatever it may be. I was at the gym and I was fighting and I think that's why I always came out on top on fights because my why was bigger than the other guys and I think that when I crossed over it was much of muchness. I just was like it's just another man standing in front of me and the way I see it is every guy I step in is standing in front of everything I've worked for. Every heartache, every hard time that guy in front of me will try and take away food off my table, he'll take away time out of my career, he will do everything in his power to ruin my life essentially. So it's very personal for me and I think that crossing over, it didn't really change much. It was just a, a same goal, same mission, just a, a new discipline. That's it. Push, 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 push. shy little kid like he was just a shy young kid we'd always you know bump into each other and talk and there was just something like we had an instant connection of you know this kid is he's a great young kid I originally started Muay Thai as like a young pup I used to play rugby league um, I got a scholarship to high school and all that kind of stuff and I think the rest of the kids kind of grew up and I didn't, I stayed a small little skinny kid. Um, and then my older brother did a bit of Muay Thai down at Buntu Gym and so I started to go down there just through the week to kind of stay fit. With his upbringing, um, there was a lot of things that he was going through that I had been through when I was a kid. So there was a lot of common ground there so I probably had more of an understanding of how he was feeling and how he was and why he was the way he was due to that. For me, I couldn't help but just be there for him. Whether it be if he needed money or if he needed a lift home. My train of thought is, you know, if I can make his day just a little bit better, that's what, what I'm there to do. had a lot of hard time growing up. Um, I was out of, in and out of home at 15 years old kind of thing and having that gym to go to every day kind of gave, gave me a, a purpose and a reason to keep kind of pushing, something to be better, something to get me towards money, something to get me the things that I never wanted to be near again kind of thing. So um, training, it was never a lack of motivation.
through a few fights. Um, you know, my coach Josh was training me full time in, the, in boxing um, out of a, a Muay Thai gym and we sat down one day and we had a really serious discussion about it and I'm like, let's make the jump. And he's like, if you want to do this, let's do it. I've always believed I could be world champion from day one. Um, you know, without going too down the, the tin foil kind of hat scenario, I've, I'm a big believer in affirmations, I'm a big believer in manifestation, I'm a big believer in visualising the things before it happens. And um, I'm not a world champion yet, and I've got a lot of upskilling to do, and I'm the first to admit that because it's a process, but from day one, I always knew that I could do this. The second that I stood in the ring, as bad as I was in my first fight, I knew I could do this. Josh went out of his way to help me um, in every way he could and he's reached out and he got me sparring with Jeff Horn, Dennis Hogan, 
um, Anthony Mundine, I'll do all that kind of stuff and I think that leveled me up a lot and it, he's always been very throwing me in the deep end and I think that you either drown or you, or you swim. <laughs> I can remember he fought who I call Brody Stalder. And it was early, like he was a kid. Brody was a grown man. 50 odd fights, absolute killer. He shouldn't have been taking that fight. Didn't win a round. But he gained a lot of experience. And when you've got a grown man absolutely, you know, trying to punch holes through a young boy, because that's essentially what he was. And I was like, holy shit, this kid is special. There is no quitting him. You can't teach that. see it is it's been a shit run like there's no way to argue with that there's no way to say you know oh it's because of this it's because of this it's been completely out of my control and you know I'm very big believer and don't focus on you know the outside variables focus on what you can control and, and what you can do and that's all you can do because other shit is going to happen regardless people we used to work with that put me in like a chokehold that I couldn't fight on certain promotions um, you know, COVID hit, then we got really stitched up with another third party that promised us the world and then threw us under the bus and then, you know, the light went on us. It was nothing to do with us. Like, there was been so much stuff that has just happened and happened and happened. And um, But it's one of those things, you just got to keep putting one foot in front of the other. I think what stands out to me the most is probably the last two and a half, three years, is our resilience with everything that has gone wrong and the fact that our bond is deeper than, than really words or anything can can put a put together because what we've been through in the last three years realistically would have broke 99% of people and we have we've had some fucking shit experiences but it's made us stronger together and individually sweet that <laughs> The main hurdle, it's not a hurdle, but we've just got to do what's right for him and not worry about the outside noise of what other people, other people's opinions, because at the end of the day, everyone's got an opinion, but they're not the ones in this ring getting punched in the face. So we've got to do what's right for him, move him forward to give him the experience um, and keep progressing forward at a, at a reasonable rate now um, that we can, because experience is going to ultimately be you know, that, that's going to be the defining factor for us. Especially when we get to that top 15 mark, we need that experience. We're about to meet Jai, who's my barber. Don't read into it, he is... <laughs> he's such a weirdo. He's something special, but when you get used to it, you'll laugh. You're when you start to understand him, but just... Be ready for not even a real conversation the whole time. <laughs> this is Jai.
Oh, you mean 300 to go? No, I lost 300 grams from last time I got in. That's it. Good to be the buddy. The police are posed super well to the way about Ben Mahoney and Narong Bunchen. Thanks again, ladies and gentlemen, coming up. I think that the mentality for this fight is I'm just thankful to have a fight. You know, Nick Atkins, um, you know, Joshy, Infliction for getting me the fight, I'm very grateful. It's been a hard run, um, even though despite being blocked off on shows, being thrown to the wolves essentially, it's, it's all the same. You know, I'm gonna take every fight as it would be a world title. I think that if I was to go in and lose a fight like this, how far that's gonna put me back, it's the same. It's ridiculous, it's the same as if I lost any other fight. Um, this man again, he's standing in front of me, He's trying to take everything I work for, and if I don't beat him, I don't move forward. So there's only one outcome, I have to beat this guy. I appreciate all my supporters, all my followers, all my friends, my family, the guys and girls that support me and have my back, they're the ones that matter, and they're the ones I'm doing it for. Um, and for anyone that's tried to rub my name in dirt, for people that want to try and say what they want to say. It doesn't matter. If you keep talking my name, my stocks will still go up. I'm still on the same trajectory. I'm still doing my thing. You can just watch me. Thank you. 